Hello world, Liu here and today we will talk about 6 things I never knew about imports in Python until the past few years. Number 1, this thing here. So usually when we import stuff like pandas, we will do it this way. Import pandas as pd and let's say we have a data frame df is equals to pd dot data frame and let's just make it empty. If we run this, we will get an empty data frame. However, do you actually know that we can use this double underscore import double underscore to import stuff? And we can do it like this. So pd is equals to double underscore import double underscore open and close bracket and in we pass a string. So we call this pen does. And if we run this again, we will get the same result. So in a way, we can now import stuff in one line. So here, instead of using pd, we can simply take this and paste it here. And let's get rid of this. And if we run this, we will still get an empty data frame, which means that we did successfully import pandas. So we probably might not use this very much, but this could be useful if you are trying to force your code into one line for fun. Number two, the all variable. So here, let's create another Python file. So b.py. And so here, let's define a bunch of stuff. Test1, pass, test2, pass, test3, pass, test4, pass. So this is b.py. And from a.py, I'm going to do this. From b import star. So star means everything here. And after this, I'm going to print the, which means I'm going to be able to see test1, test2, test3, and test4. So let's run this. And here we have a bunch of stuff. But at the end, we have test1 here, test2, test3, and test4. So four of these are from B. However, if we add a all, and let's say we have test1 and test2 only. And if we rerun a.py, we will not have test3 and test4. And so here, the all magic variable will actually decide for us what b.py will export when we use from b import star. And so let's say that if I only want to export test1, I can remove test2 from here. And if I run this again, notice that only test1 will be present. And if I try to test 3, I will get an error because test 3 does not exist. However, if I want my code to work, I can simply add test 3 here. And now my code will work. So the all keyword is actually pretty useful if you have many things in your module and you don't want to actually export everything. Number three, absolute imports. So for this, let's create a bunch of folders. So we have test one, and inside test one, we have test two. And inside test two, we have test three. And inside test three, we have a file called hello.py. And inside hello, we have define hello and let's just print hello so let's go back to a.py and let's say we want to import hello from hello.py and to do this we need to use an absolute import so from test1.test2.test3 so what i'm doing here is i'm simply following the folder structure so test1.test2.test3 and dot hello import and here we go into hello.py in order to get the function name, which is simply hello. And if we type hello, let's run this. And this proves that we have successfully imported hello. So let's say we define another thing here, define hi, and let's print hi, hi. And so instead of hello, let's say we import star, which means import every single function from hello.py. And if we type hi here, we will get hello and hi hi. Number four, if name is equals to min. So if you have been working with Python for a while, I'm pretty sure that you have seen this around. So what happens is usually we have a bunch of stuff here and at the end we have if name is equals to main colon and then we run our main function or whatever. So before we try to understand this, let's try to understand name. So let's remove all of this and let's print name. So if we run this, we will get min. 
So here, the name variable will be underscore underscore min underscore underscore. And this is main because we are running Python a.py directly. And let's say in b.py, I'm going to put define test1 and I'm going to print name. And let's say from b import test1. And test1, open and close bracket. And if I run this, I will get b instead. So here, let's create a c.py and let's do the same. So in c.py, we have test two so from c import test two and if we run this we'll get b and c so here the name variable will be equals to our file name if we do not run the file directly however if we run the file directly the name variable will be equals to me which is this as such if we do this if name equals to main print hello from a.py we will get hello from a.py because name is in fact equals to main however let's say we add this into c.py and let's also add this into b.py and so if we run a.py we will only get hello from a.py because in b.py the name is equals to b and not equals to main, so this will not run. And similarly, in c.py, name is equals to c instead of main, so this will also not run. However, if we choose to run b.py, we will get hello from b.py, because if we choose to run b.py itself, name will be equals to main, which means that this will be true, and this line will run. So here, the if name is equals to main statement is actually very useful in ensuring that we do not accidentally run code that we do not want to run. So whatever that we put under this if statement will only run if we run this file itself. Number five, sys.path and importing packages. So let's first do this, import sys and let's print sys.path. And if we run this, we'll get a bunch of stuff over here. So this bunch of stuff is the paths that Python will search for when you import stuff. So if I do a present working directory, I'm currently in this path, which is the first one here. So other than this, I have packages, libraries, slash framework, slash whatever, and so on. So next, let's say I want to import hello from inside test tree. So instead of using an absolute import here, I can actually add this path into sys.path dynamically using Python. So let's say sys.path.append and let's add the path here. So we have this slash test1 slash test2 slash test3. And if we run this again, notice that we have our new path down here. And because this is the case, we can start importing from there. So from hello import hello and if we call hello it will work and here notice that hello works and this is only because we added this new path into our sys.path so if i choose not to do this and let's clear this first i will get an error because we don't have any module named hello so once again if i uncomment this python will know where to look for this hello and that will be inside this path over here. So this can be useful if you want to import some Python packages from some weird place in your computer. Number six, relative imports. So for this, let's create another folder. So test, and here I'm going to have x.py and y.py. And in x.py, I'm going to define hello x. And next, I'm going to print hello from x. And I'm going to do the same for y.py. So hello y and hello from y. So next, I'm going to import both of these functions into a. So from test.x import hello x and from test.y import hello y. So let's add an init here to force this to become a package. And if I call this hello x and hello y, I will get hello from x and hello from y. 
However, what if I only want to import from test.x? So I'm going to remove this. And in test.x, I want to import from y. So I can actually use a relative import here. So from dot y import hello y. So here, let's add a hello y. And if I run this, I'm going to get hello from x and hello from y. And this is possible here because of my relative import. So here, one dot means the same directory. So since y is in the same directory as x, I can use this statement to import hello y from y. So here, this syntax is useful if you do not wish to write very long absolute imports. So thanks for watching, and hopefully you have learned at least one new thing about Python imports today. See you in the next one.